us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils, for the yoke that burdened them, the pull on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
Christ the Lord. They shall exalt before the Lord, for he comes. For he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperamentally, justly, and devoutly in this age as we wait the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I, claim, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord.
Merry Christmas. So as I asked Jesus what he wanted me to speak about this Christmas night, one word echoed deeply within my soul. Hope. Real hope. And not a worldly hope, but a profoundly deep hope in Him. And I don't say that lightly. This has been a very trying year for many, many, many people. There are many in the world who will be around trees and dinner tables this Christmas that will be missing someone because they've passed on. And if we think back to last Christmas, especially here at St. Leo's, we had just opened this beautiful church. We were celebrating our first Christmas in it with great joy. Could any of us have imagined the year that we have been through? the experiences that we've had. And so now, maybe more than ever, we need hope. So what is it? More importantly, what is the foundation of it? And what do we individually hope for? I think if you ask many in the world, they would say almost immediately, I hope that we can return to the life that we once knew. And although that may be front and center on many minds, there is an underlying problem that is far, far greater and bigger than what is presently happening and has happened over this year. As a matter of fact, what we are going through right now is not the cause of the chaos. But rather, the pandemic has simply revealed the underlying true condition of life. A condition that we have done a very, very good job of covering up and masking for many, many years. So long, in fact, we began to forget what the true reality of this life actually is. And as we begin and began and had redefined so many things within life, as we drifted away from the front and center of who we are, we also began to forget about God. After all, if we have risen to the heights of human ingenuity, if all the idols that we have created for ourselves in this modern time have solved the problem of our fallen condition. then why do we need God? Why do we need a God who offers us his mercy to save us from our sins, offering us a whole new life, different than this one, into the next, promises of a resurrection in a world to come, Why do we need him if all we want is the illusion of now? The simple answer to all of it is that we stopped needing him. Sure, we paid him our lip service, offered him token worship, but the real savior 
of the world is man. All the security and platitudes of our power, our strength. We will save the planet. And then it happened. In an instant, caused by something that is so small it cannot be seen with the naked eye, we have discovered how truly fragile we really are. In a life that we thought was unchangeable, a country that we believe to be invincible, In our heart of hearts, we thought it would go on forever. How quickly it was brought to its knees. How quickly chaos has become the norm, whether we like it or not. But in this storm, in the shaking of humanity, sifting of souls to reveal what is truly in the heart of men. God is still there shining in the darkness. And we are once again, for the first time in a long time, reminded of how much we need him. But the good news is this, he's right there waiting for us. Two thousand and twenty years ago, it wasn't much different. In the midst of Roman occupation, political oppression, during a time of tremendous religious corruption and scandal, in the religious leadership of Israel, when all seemed lost, that God had abandoned his people, they had been waiting for 2,000 years for the Messiah. In that final hour, when everything seemed to be absolutely lost, chaotic, disordered, it was then that the Lord God Almighty descended to earth and became a human being. The problem is, is that we have said it for so long that it doesn't even amaze us anymore. God is a man. And in becoming one of us, he has raised us to the level of divinity. It's not just mere salvation that we received. But in God becoming man, we became gods. And then there's the coming. Something that no one anticipated. He didn't come in power. He came in weakness. As a gentle reminder that we need not fear him. Next time you're worried about his love for you, hold a baby. Because that's what we're celebrating tonight. No one's afraid of a baby. He wasn't given a king's reception. Rather, he chose to be welcomed by poor, gruff shepherds and pagan magicians from the east. The high priest wasn't there. The Levitical priests of the temple weren't there. The king of Israel wasn't there. But they were showing us 
that he came to save all, no matter who you are, where you're from, or what your status is. Everyone is equal at the foot of the Christ. And he will start by saving whoever he wishes first. And even though it was the single greatest moment in human history, it went largely unnoticed by mankind because God does not need us to save us. Our role is to believe in him and what he is doing. The hope of humanity was fulfilled that holy night when God kept his promises. But in the way God saw it, not the way we do. And in doing so, he laid the cornerstone of hope for an everlasting future. All the promises that God made were fulfilled in the Christ. And on this night, he doubles down that he will never leave us and he has come to save us then, now, and forever, no matter how crazy the world seems. His hand is in it and he is on the move. So tonight his pledge and promise is that he is right in the midst of this storm with us. No matter what we face, if we trust in him, if we listen to him, if we follow him, he will deliver us from whatever we face, personally, nationally, and globally. And this, my dear people, is the foundation of true, lasting hope. Paul says it the best, if God is for us, who can be against us? And if Jesus is at the center of your heart and he is first in your life, then nothing should trouble you. It will always all work out according to his will. And so the real question tonight on this Christmas Eve is what have we placed our hope in? It's a profound question. I mean, really, regardless of what side of the aisle you are on, do you really believe that government and politics can do anything? Have you enthroned it as your savior? Because if you have, you will watch the news in a rage. Put our people in, then we'll get the job done. You have one king. And he is the Christ. And he is the only one that saves. And this political god and false idol is being brought to its knees in front of our eyes. Let it die. No matter how advanced our medicine may be, do we really believe that it is a shield of invincibility against every disease that exists or may come? I thank God for medical technology and what it does for humankind, but it is not God. At the very most, it may be a gift from him. But we turn to it as if it's a savior. And with the debt clock approaching $30 trillion, What is money? 
aside from an illusion that we pretend to be real. These idols and many more play a counterfeit in our lives and we have trusted in them for far too long. We have created a false utopia based upon a house of cards that if we do not repent and return to the Lord, he will bring down to nothing. We have seen it time and time again in history. And it's not out of anger, it is out of his mercy because we have wandered too far away. The promise of Christmas is that God himself is yours and the greatest treasure of your life. One that so many times we put at the end of the list, the back of the line, the bottom of the barrel. From this day forward, commit yourself as a present to him on his birthday that you will profoundly practice your faith. With great zeal, you will repent of sin. And with convicted devotion, you will love him and him alone. As we come to receive Jesus in Holy Communion on this Christmas Eve Mass, place your hope in him. And in the times that we are living in and in the times to come, and they are coming, you will have nothing to fear if he is your everything. But if we place our hope in these false idols of the world, we've seen and we will continue to see them for what they really are. Nothing dust in the wind. And so tonight, Jesus, we wish you a happy birthday. And we beseech and beg for your blessing upon our souls, our families. May we only hope in you. for our creed after we pronounce the words and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man we will kneel in honor of the incarnation for a moment of silence I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to our Heavenly Father, we bring him our prayers. For our Holy Father, bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Lord continue to bless them in their ministry of heralding the birth of Jesus, the Son of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hold political power, may the grace of the Holy Spirit help them use their position for the sake of the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrant families who travel in search of a home, may they, through the mercy of God, find welcome, support, and help to start a new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share in this worship tonight, may the Christ child bring great light into any darkness of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women serving in our nation's military, especially those who cannot be home with their families this blessed season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may our gracious God welcome them into eternal home to praise him forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear these prayers and answer them according to your most holy will. For we make them always through Christ our Lord.
this awe-filled mystery to the invisible, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages. He has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation, and calling straining humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration. petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, celebrating the most sacred night on which the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Mary the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip. Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who brought, who through this participation at your altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before you, before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
this Christmas, as I prayed extensively about it, I would like to consecrate all of you to the Sacred Heart of Jesus as your priest and spiritual father. I really believe that this year we're going to need the Lord's help on a profound level. And so this prayer is, you don't have to do anything, I'll pray it over you. Just open your hearts to it. And even if you have loved ones that aren't here, or locked away at home, or however that works, the prayer extends to them as well through your own desire. Prostrate before you, Lord Jesus Christ, we consecrate to your sacred heart ourselves and everything dear to us. Our thoughts, words, and actions, our sorrows, our hopes, our relatives and friends. We desire to belong entirely to you, to know all things, and to despise the pleasures, riches, and honors of this world, and everything which could be an obstacle in your service. Sacred Heart of Jesus, teach us by your example in the stable of Bethlehem, and by your whole life, meekness and humility. Teach us by your agony and sufferings on the cross, patience and resignation to the holy will of God. Teach us in the mystery of the Holy Eucharist to admire your power, wisdom, and love. Hundreds of years ago, you, re you revealed to St. Margaret Mary your desire to receive the special homage of your creatures. In obedience to that divine entreaty, behold us at your feet to consecrate to your service and love our hearts, our family, and our home in a special manner. Heart of Jesus, in the name of Mary and under the patronage of St. Joseph, we consecrate to you our whole household. Like Nazareth, may it always be a center of faith, hope, and charity, and peace, a hive of prayer and true zeal to, for your glory. Guide our lives, direct our steps, and sustain us in all our ways. We earnestly consecrate to you all our trials, afflictions, joys, and events of our domestic life. We beseech you to pour your blessing upon every member of this family, those who are gathered here and those who are absent, those who are living and those who are dead. We, with confidence, we entrust them all to you. If among them there be any who have lost your grace and grieved your loving heart by sin, with deepest sorrow we now desire to offer reparation and implore forgiveness for them. We beg your mercy and grace also for every family in the whole world. O oh, Sacred Heart, shelter the cradle of the newborn baby. Bless the child at school. Guide the vocation of young men and women. Sweeten the lot of the sufferer, support the aged, console the widow, and be a father to the orphan. O oh, Sacred Heart of Jesus, we entrust to you our own dear country and all those who govern us. O Jesus, source of, infinite, of an infinite ocean of mercy, we beseech you, assist us in the suffering, in sufferings and agony of death. Unite us then still more closely to your heart and to the heart of your Immaculate Mother. Be our refuge and our place of rest, and when our souls have taken their flight to dwell forever in your sacred heart, may we see again in heaven every member of, his, of this family which we now so earnestly and unitedly desire to consecrate without reserve to you. Amen. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity. May through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with Him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Announcements, uh, if you're visiting or haven't been for a while, obviously we didn't have a collection tonight. The collection baskets are on either side of the baptismal font and at all the doors. If you've already made a contribution, thank you. Uh, if not, I encourage you. It's been a rough year with the pandemic and we need all the help we can get. Uh, to that second end, there is a second collection in the vestibule and in, there's a little basket out here in this entryway as well. That's for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. 
Uh, they're the, the, the group in our parish that really is the outreach to the impoverished. And they do just a phenomenal job, not only with praying with them and respecting them, uh, but getting them back on their feet and assisting with the helping hand. Just today, we provided uh, over, I think, 175 uh, meals for the poor uh, in the form of to-go uh, to go turkey dinner. Um, I really wanted, uh, the year we've been having, I felt it was only right that every single person who had needed a good Christmas dinner got one. Um, and so those were monies that you've donated uh, over the year, either to the parish or to the St. Vincent de Paul Society, provided that. And we served them in such a way that a poor family could take it home and put it into different bowls and you know, feed it to their children as if they bought it from the store and cooked it themselves. So thank you for your loving generosity. It's a great gift to Jesus of charity on this Christmas Eve. Please know of my prayers for you and your family. I pray that your Christmas is full of joy and happiness around your table and your tree at home. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me.